This video is sponsored by Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. This is a video about my boring life. I used to feel pretty guilty about not traveling all the time, going to concerts, brunches, especially seeing videos by someone like Nathaniel Drew, who I'm a huge fan of, but he's always jet setting. It always seems like he's up to so much. In fact, a lot of people in my space, I see them constantly doing cool things. And the best way I can describe it is feeling guilty. I pride myself on being a hard worker. At least I like to think of myself as being a hard worker. So does the fact that I run the same day over and over again imply that I'm not reaching my potential, that I'm not doing everything I should be doing? I've come to realize that I get the most fulfillment out of running the same day over and over. What I would call just running my system. Running the system of a decently boring day. Now, just to be clear, I like doing these things, like things like waking up, going to the gym, reading books, writing, <laughs> watching a movie. These things are fun to me. It's satisfying for me to run the system that I had set for myself. And of course, there is the occasional moment of enthusiasm of trying new things, but maybe you're like me, and sometimes you feel like you're not doing enough. You should be jet setting, you should be attending that concert or that social gathering. I actually wanna give four reasons as to why, if you feel like you have a boring day to day, you're actually on the right track. You're doing the right things. And the first reason is a boring schedule lets me leverage the power of routine. Boring days allow you to tap into the power of routine and consistency. People across various industries, they all say the same thing. Consistency is key. When it comes to achieving your dreams, no matter what you're doing, if you wanna be a better filmmaker, being a consistent filmmaker, regardless of where you started out with talent, you're gonna get somewhere great eventually if you're just consistent with it, if it's a part of your system. And when you just do a couple of things every day and your days are pretty boring, it allows you to tap into consistency in a way you simply could not otherwise. I mean, the first thing that messes up my consistency is doing something outside of my schedule, outside of the stuff that's really important to me. Or a great way to think about this is, it's better to be good consistently than great on occasion. And doing a bunch of stuff might look cool for 15 seconds on an Instagram story, but how much is that activity really doing for you long term? Mihai Csikszentmihalyi has done a lot of research on creativity and creative people, and he found that lots of creative people, they use strict routines to free up their minds. They wear the same clothes over and over, they wake up and sleep at the same time. They accept their routines, their idiosyncrasies, and they use them to their advantage. And they only concentrate on the things that count. Michael Phelps is an insane example of this. His coach, Bob Bowman, had designed a nighttime visualization exercise that Phelps regularly practiced. He called it watching the videotape. So close your eyes, visualize all the ways you could break through. Then imagine everything that could go wrong. It would just be him mentally rehearsing the race or the practice on the upcoming day. And in fact, oftentimes when things would get high pressure, his coach would simply yell like, run the videotape and Phelps would immediately dial in to the routine, that visualization he'd done the night before. And he didn't just do this mental exercise occasionally. He did it every day before he went to bed and every day when he woke up for five years. I think his consistency with his routine is a big reason why Phelps became the man he is. This ties in very closely to the second reason why living a boring life is good, is that it allows you to practice essentialism. Essentialism is a philosophy about making the wisest possible investment of your time and energy in order to operate at your highest point of contribution, only focusing on the things that matter most. Derek Sivers is someone, he had made this very good point. It's a good, useful phrase. Everything should either be a hell yes or a no. If you're thinking about doing something, if someone says, hey, why don't we meet up for drinks on a Friday night? If you don't feel truly enthusiastic about it, if it's not a hell yes, you probably should just say no. Because saying yes to that is coming at the sacrifice of whatever else you could be doing. There's an opportunity cost with every commitment we make. I've struggled a little bit with being a people pleaser throughout my life. And sometimes I've agreed to do something because I'm not a flake. I actually go through and do that thing. And then of course I put up the Instagram story about, look, I was here, I did this thing. But if I really think about it, the event had nothing to do with me. In fact, some of the times I've been out doing this cool thing, showing off that I've been doing this cool thing, but I've been just bored and miserable on the inside. It makes me wonder why for a lot of these concerts that people go to, everyone's got their phone up, putting up the story of being at this concert. I wonder how many of these people actually enjoy the things that they're doing and how often like maybe they just need that Instagram story to feel like it was worth it to do this thing just so they can show it off for a little bit. I remember one time my friends asked me to go to Zion National Park. This is back when I was still a teacher living in Los Angeles. And so for spring break, we did it. We went on this trip to Zion. You know, on paper, 
It was what it should be. I was at a beautiful national park. I was breathing in this cool air. I was climbing, taking in the sights, feeling nature all around me. But on the inside, I just, I honestly just did not give a fuck. This isn't to like knock my friends. I love them, they're lovely people. And I'm glad that they're in my life and that they asked me to do this trip. But I just don't, I'm not like this national park kind of guy. I just, I, I just don't care. I cannot bring myself to care. At the time, I was very much immersed in like the Hollywood actor circuit. And I was coming across a lot of pain pursuing that. I was like kind of sad about auditioning and getting rejected and spending hours on a Saturday filling up postcards with my name and my resume on the back and submitting them and doing tapes online, just getting rejected all the time. But that was actually more meaningful to me because it, I actually cared about that. I guess I only care about a handful of things. At the time, like pursuing acting, trying to murder my enemies in Hollywood, that was the thing that actually mattered. And despite on paper, this trip to Zion looking cool, maybe it should have felt fulfilling, but it just didn't because it, it wasn't one of my essential things. The third point is a little bit of a left turn, but a boring routine lets you get good sleep. And I mention this because sleep has such an enormous impact on our entire experience of life. On some level, life isn't anything more than the rooms that we're inside of with different people. And my ability to be present, happy, and to actually be able to concentrate on the things I wanna do has a lot to do with sleep. A lot of this realization now is related to the fact that I've quit drinking alcohol, I've given it up entirely, and this new discipline, this new way of living has really affected my quality of sleep and just how focused and present I'm able to be. And for whatever reason, social gatherings of all kinds, they often make alcohol the focal point. But when you give up, that kind of excitement or partying, it often allows you to get better sleep and function better. And this is no small thing. Malcolm Gladwell had popularized this 10,000 hour rule where the more hours you put into something, the closer you are to approaching true mastery. And that magical number seems to be 10,000 hours. One of the examples he gave was about violinists and how elite violinists simply practice more than others. But there's a less well-known finding from that study and it's the fact that these elite violinists actually slept on average one hour more than the average American. They slept 8.6 hours a night. Sleep allowed these top performers to regenerate so that they could practice with greater concentration. So while they did also practice more than other violinists, they also got more out of each hour of practice because they were better rested, they were better recovered. Recovery, it like will make an enormous impact on your experience and your relationship with your work if you are underslept. And I can't help but think, a lot of people who flex on their exciting lifestyle, maybe they're always traveling or something, it's kind of hard to maintain great sleep. In fact, whenever we've traveled for the channel, the first thing that goes is sleep. And oftentimes when I've been on trips, like making cool videos, you know, shooting collabs that I was excited about, collabs that were like a hell yes for me, I do remember on those trips, I was actually vastly sleep deprived for a number of them. It's here where I briefly wanna bring up the sponsor of today's video, which is Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. This is a supplement that I've been taking for almost a year, a full year of Magnesium Breakthrough, but that's because it's had a huge impact on how well I sleep each night. Magnesium is a mineral that a big part of the population is deficient in. It's also a very important factor in maintaining healthy testosterone levels. And I find when I consistently take my magnesium supplement, my sleep is far better, which has an enormous impact on the rest of my schedule. It's a complete full spectrum magnesium formula, which includes all seven forms of supplemental magnesium, all naturally derived. Taking it can help reduce your cortisol, allow for deeper relaxation, better sleep, reducing stress. All of these are really important for protein synthesis as well, hypertrophy, putting on muscle. And if you use my code SINBAD10 at checkout, you'll save an extra 10% on Magnesium Breakthrough. The final point I wanna make here is that doing only a few things allows for visible progress. If you stop worrying about doing a bunch of activities that make you look cool and pare down to the most important, impactful things on your roster, you can hit those things like dynamite. Hence, your odds of making progress on those few activities is far greater. And progress is one of the most fulfilling feelings there is. Instead of needlessly gyrating with nothing to show for it other than time and energy wasted, and of course that cool Instagram story which is gonna go away after 24 hours, it's good to have the courage to be boring. This isn't to say that I'm not gonna take a trip or I'm not gonna travel, try new things. I definitely am, but only if I can get that feeling within me that 
it really is exciting. It's really worthwhile to take on a new adventure. In fact, I've come to realize that living a boring life in your day to day ultimately allows for the greatest adventures to unfold. So for those of us who are willing to only chase after those bigger adventures, to us I say, greatness is coming. We'll see you in the next one.